All right, last little bit of wood to do here. A lot of this is pretty small stuff, but I like to split it so it dries better and then we use it for starter wood. So a little bit more wood to split here. Not really real important to get it. I mean, half that one sticking on me. Maple's being cantankerous there. But uh, it's not going so good. I've been out here all morning, so a little tired. It's been hot, and the black flies are eating us alive, but that's all right. That's all part of uh, living out here. Ah, come on. They pinch you like that. We've been having this, this stuff over here. You can see how crooked this stuff is. Tried our best to saw it straight, but I was trying to split this. It's aspen. There was a tree back in there. It was all twisted and everything else. And when a tree doesn't grow good and straight, it's a cull tree. It's good for nothing but to be hewn down and cast into the fire, as the Bible says. But these things are so nasty to split. I'll show you here in a little bit about what they look like when they're actually split. But they're so nasty to split, it's easier just to, to rip them with a chainsaw. Because what I've learned over the years, you can certainly beat on them with a, with a maul until they're split. But then you get worn out like I am right now. All right. So... And the black flies are bad right now, really bad, so that's another issue, like I said earlier. But uh, this should be enough firewood for the year. What happens when trees grow crooked, stand back for just a minute, is the when trees lean real heavy or they don't grow real straight, it creates reaction wood where basically the tree has to reinforce to hold itself up if the tree is leaning like this it has to get a lot you know stronger and the wood doesn't grow nice and straight when you see a tree that grows good and straight Luther's over here sneezing um, when you see a tree that grows good and straight it splits real easy um, but when it gets crooked see how the wood the grains kind of tying together right there like that it just kind of has to be pulled apart that's not too bad but I'll show you here in a little bit what I'm talking about about the really bad stuff you done sneezing? but we got a pretty good pile all right on to the topic of the video our firewood should be done here for the year you hear the four-wheeler going away in the distance there um, but uh, the topic of this video, just had some thoughts on this thing about the generational differences and whatever else. And uh, I just want to make the statement, I don't need the government or any other man-made system to keep me safe. Um, growing up, we grew up, I grew up uh, back in the 1980s, I was born in 1975, so I'm a generation X, you know, as they say. And there was no such thing as the internet. Uh, we didn't even have that in high school. I graduated in 1994, Peckway Valley High School. And uh, no cell phones. You know, we, we went someplace. It was, uh, if you had an emergency and needed to call, well, you went up to somebody's house and asked to use their phone. Or there were pay phones sometimes at convenience stores or gas stations. That's just the way that it was. And uh, I rode four-wheelers. I rode dirt bikes. I rode three-wheelers. Oh no, the horrible, terrible three-wheelers. Saw a propaganda thing on the on YouTube about that, what they were bringing out against three-wheelers back in the past. And uh, somebody pointed out in the comments section, it's so funny, you know, they outlawed three-wheelers back in the 1980s because of the accidents that were being caused. And now you have Honda and Harley Davidson both make trikes, a Goldwing trike and a Harley the full dresser trike that you can go down the highway 75, 80 miles an hour <laughs> on your three-wheeler. I thought they were so bad and dangerous. They're not. It was the rider. But, you know, I had accidents. We, I wrecked bad different times and, and uh, never ended up in the hospital or anything like that. But had, I had friends that died on dirt bikes and three-wheelers and four-wheelers and ones that got injured really bad. And whatever. That's just part of it. 
That was just part of growing up. You know, you are responsible for your own decisions. Hey, see that big, huge hill climb? You're going to go up that? Oh, you know, and yeah, I don't know. And then all your buddies would be there and they'd say, oh, you don't have the guts to do it. Then they'd say other things too, which I won't mention now that I'm saved. <laughs> but you know, they would do this thing and they'd taunt you and you know, oh, you're sissy, come on. Yeah, do it and whatever. And then you'd try and you'd fail and you'd wreck and you'd go rolling back down the hill and get hurt and whatever. <laughs> you know, get burned from your exhaust or whatever. It's good times. Uh, and there wasn't any, you know, selfies or whatever else, you know. You say, well, you're doing it now. Uh, actually, it's a camera on a little thing here. But, uh, <laughs> but, you know, that's the way it was. This modern generation, you know, what my generation, when it ended, you go to the millennial thing, then it was, you know, you blame other people for your problems. It's not my fault. It's the way I was raised or it was society or it was, uh, I wasn't given a, you know, grape lollipop when I was three years old or something or, you know, all this stuff. They make excuses for it. And then the Generation Z that came after that, they just want the government to do everything for them. And it's just, you know, I don't ever want to do any kind of manual labor. You know, what I just did down there would be a nightmare for most Generation Z uh, kids. You know, splitting firewood by hand out here, sweating and having black flies flying in your throat and in your, in your eyeball and in your ear and whatever else. You can probably see the little black flies flying around. They're not horrible this year, but they're black flies are black flies, you know. But I just got to thinking about this whole thing and I thought, you know, it wasn't just Generation X that you had to think for yourself and you are responsible for your own actions. It was all generations before that. Unless they were just total, you know, serfs back in the, you know, feudal days of the past. But uh, true freedom and liberty gives you, makes their, it's, it's a system of personal accountability. It's not a system of the government has to be here to protect me and tell me what to do. No, I will dictate my own life. If I want to go to the mountains, I'm going to go to the mountains. If I want to go down to the beach, I'll go to the beach. If I want to go to an amusement park, I'll go to an amusement park. Whatever. But now we have this wicked satanic system that's been brought in by these weakened generations, which happened to show up right around the same time as the internet and cell phones showed up. Hmm. Um, that's why I'm not in you know, Right now, there's no way anybody can call me. Call If you know my phone number, you can call and leave a message eight miles away from here at my office. But there's no phone here. What happens if a criminal comes? Then I'll take care of the criminal myself. I am responsible for my own actions. I am responsible for my own property. You see what I'm saying? Um, what happens if you get hurt? Then I'll have to figure a way to take care of it. And I have gotten hurt, and I have taken care of it. Without calling 911 or anything else. What happens if there's a fire? Then what would you do? I'll take care of it. Okay? <laughs> I will take care of it. I've been doing a thing now for many years, which I will show you here, a way to uh, make my own fire department, so to speak. First of all, rainwater catchment, like that. That will fill up, and as it, the rain comes off the, the edge of the roof here, drops down in, oh, black fly in the eye. There's the black fly on my finger. Love how they do that, but you know, this is, will be a 170 gallons of water right there, and another one on the other side. And then down here, old milk jugs filled with water. Instead of just throwing them out or taking them to the recycling place or something, you put the water in the milk jug, and then you have a gallon of water, times however many you can get. So, I take responsibility for my own actions. Um, all of my vehicles, every single one of them, has the minimum amount of coverage that I have to have required by law in order to drive on the roads, which I think is stupid, to be honest with you. I don't think we should have to have insurance. You know, they say it's self-insuring now um, when you just say, I don't want homeowner's insurance or whatever else. If I have a problem, I'll take care of it. I'll take the loss or I'll, I'll pay for it or whatever else. You know, and I understand that, you know, with the thing of, on being on the road, you have other drivers and you can't control how they drive and whatever. And there's some real idiots out there. I get it. But still, I think we'd all be better off without all this insurance. That's another issue. But see, it, you know, it goes back to this thing. 
it's not something if you're millennial or gen z you say well i'm just this is my generation i'm just cursed no get away from that generational curse uh you don't need to be online all the time you don't here's a little cherry tree little cherry blossoms smells really good at this time of the year really neat uh, it's choke cherry but they still make um some pretty good things make choke cherry drink and whatever else but uh but you know this thing of uh now the banks oh uh, we can't trust you with cash you know oh you're going to come in and get out five thousand dollars in cash what are you doing with that cash and you know even the thing of a wire transfer when i bought my uh police interceptor car uh my crown vic police interceptor bought it because it was cheap got it on an auction on ebay that's why i got it they're good reliable cars and they're ballistic they have ballistic panels in the doors so that might help in the future <laughs> but i bought that thing six thousand dollars uh i'm telling you that for a reason went to the bank it wasn't you know sixty thousand or something six thousand dollars it's not that much for a vehicle and i went in had sixty thousand miles on it so it's you know really good shape it's from texas so there's no rust at all on the car but six thousand dollars go into the bank need to do a wire transfer here's the thing from ebay saying i won the auction here's the guy's routing number the whole everything are you sure about this sir are you, are you really sure are you sure do you feel safe with this seller do you you know whatever whatever see oh but brian they're just trying to keep you safe i don't want people to keep me safe that's up to me okay i guess i should have some you know uh forest ranger out here holding my hand in case there's a moose that runs out of the woods or something you know or maybe a black bear or whatever or canadian lynx or something or, or you know a squirrel could hurt me as well i mean it's it's ridiculous uh the bank just this year i did a video about it um they limited how much i can spend with my debit card to five thousand dollars a day why it's a business checking account for the ministry i can't buy more than five thousand a day spend more than five thousand dollars a day why we're trying to keep you safe mr denlinger um how is that keeping me safe well just in case you made a bad purchase or whatever then, okay then i lose the money <laughs> you see if i'm walking along here and all of a sudden i trip on a stick coming out of the ground and i fall down and smack my face into the dirt well okay that was dumb i shouldn't have done that not oh, i have to sue somebody somebody has to be accountable for this uh -huh. you know that's no way to live and i don't care what age you are you need to get out of this mindset that uh you feel threatened or uh, I, I need to be kept safe uh, i should call somebody somebody should get in trouble for this take responsibility for your own actions <laughs> You know, uh, hey, and, and the thing that we need to do now too with banking is we need to start to bring in uh, digital currencies because that way your, your money will be more secure. Oh, doesn't that make it more hackable? Uh, yeah, we need to get rid of cash. Cash is bad. Criminals use cash. Oh, how about criminal hackers that steal millions of dollars and extort millions and millions of dollars out of businesses and things? because they can get into the people's computer systems and whatever else and mess up their casinos and banks and state offices and whatever else. You see, it's kind of an interesting thing, but the Bible says, when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. People that want to keep you safe are actually the tyrants. See? The best thing that you can do is just say, hey, you know what, police force up in the area here, every police officer I've ever met in Northern Maine has been a really cool guy, every single one of them. It's good to live in the country and that's, that's why you'll have a lot of good police officers because they're, you know, they're good guys in the area. Every single one's been good. And you know, I have guns and things on me and, and it's just, oh, okay, you know, uh, fine. Uh, you don't have to have a concealed carry permit here in the state of Maine. You can carry a gun whenever you want to, hmm, okay. See, a real man looks at another man with a gun and says, yeah, I don't have anything to fear from that guy. He's a decent man and whatever else. Well, what if he escalates the problem? Well, then I'll escalate my force. It's just that simple. You can't live in a world where you say, we have to take the guns away from everybody because somebody might shoot someone. That's stupid. 
Okay, then take away all hot rods. And then, you know, hey, the Tesla cars, they're supposedly really fast. So, you know, these new EVs, they're, they accelerate very quickly. So they're dangerous as well. And you're driving a, you know, well, driving ticking time bomb or whatever else. Those stupid things, when they start to catch on fire that you can't put the fire out, burns at 4,000 degrees or whatever. <laughs> Let's, I mean, where, how far do you take this, this nanny state, this, we will keep you safe so that you can live in peace. See, that's kind of the, the whole thing with the end times. And uh, what's the Antichrist do? Well, I'm going to come and I'm going to bring everybody together so we can all agree. One world religion. And then we'll have a, a cashless system of money where we can keep you safe and we'll have your ID and everything else and, and um, we'll know who you are and we can track and trace you for your safety. You see? Uh, we're supposed to live dangerously. Life is boring if you can't have a little bit of danger now and then. You know, it's the dangerous times that you'll remember. Uh, there are a lot of times I, I spent thousands of hours riding motorcycles over the years. And you know the times I remember the most? The dangerous times. The times I uh, almost lost it in a corner going with my, you know, one of my motorcycles, my Ninja ZX-11. I remember going around this corner the one time up in the, down now, in the Pennsylvania Grand Canyon. And I was riding, it was three Ninjas. Police officer actually was riding, he had a 750R Ninja. And then my brother-in-law, he had a 750 I think at the time, or 900 I guess, Ninja, an older one. And I had my ZX-11. And I remember I saw Wendell, the police officer on his 750R uh, Ninja, and he went into this corner and I saw him kind of do something a little bit erratic, but I couldn't tell because it, it was a blind corner. And then my brother-in-law was, he was between Wendell and myself and he went and I saw his brake light come on and he swerved and I thought, what are they doing? Came around the corner and there's a porcupine, <laughs> big porcupine right on the road. And we're, you know, we're going through the canyon, you know, ripping through the canyon, 70, 80 miles an hour you know, 35 mile an hour turns, you know, and we're doing 70 or 80 through the corners. Good times, very good times. But I guess there should have been laws passed against that because I was not being safe. <laughs> um, I detest that. And you know what, it goes into another thing as well. And that is uh, safe forms of preaching. Brother, just stick with the gospel. You don't always have to be attacking other things. Don't always be so controversial. You're, you know, Brian, you're a good preacher, but you just get too controversial. You're so bitter. You're so angry. Well, I am angry at the devil. I hate the devil. Um, servants of the devil out there, or even Satan, if you have time to watch this, uh, please know that I hate you. Uh, and servants of the devil, I hate your master. So, you know, there you go. Um, but I, I'm going to take chances. Because you see, who really keeps me safe? Who really gives me peace? The peace that passeth understanding. Peace unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm. My peace and safety comes from the Lord. He's the one that's protected me. He's the one that I can look back throughout my life and I can say, man, how did I get through all those dangerous things that happened? <laughs> you know, how did I get through this and that and whatever else? Um, all the accidents and all the crazy extreme sports stuff I used to do. How did I get through all that? The Lord wasn't in a prudential or or a state farm insurance or you know department of homeland security or anything else um not at all uh, i live a dangerous life and i will always live a dangerous life and if that's unacceptable for these satanic devils the goonies in the government who ironically are stepping out of their god ordained role they're supposed to be a terror to the evil not to the good and when they start to become a terror to the good, then you say, you know what? I'm done, I'm not following you anymore. I will govern myself and God will keep me safe. God will give me peace. I don't need you anymore. You want to grow the size of government to this insane, ridiculous number that we have right now? I mean, just disgusting seeing what has happened to this country and it's all because of the bad government thing keeping us safe and everything else. You know, we need, to, we need to have tolerance for mental illness. We need to uh, be okay with terrorists bring, being brought into our country by the millions. Um, it's all, you know, we're just trying to keep people safe. 
they're refugees from other countries. No, it's an invading army that's being brought in on purpose. And it's eventually going to spill over and it's going to actually lead to war. And a lot of killing, and a lot of death. And the Antichrist, by peace, he shall destroy many, the Bible says. So again, the biggest killers are the ones that come along offering you peace. Lots of peace. Oh, it will be peaceful. Everything will be nice. No, actually, you're going to kill people. So, um, just a challenge out there to you. Uh, yeah, there's, there's differences within the generations. I get it, definitely. But if you're a younger generation, fight against this whole thing. Do not conform to the world. Do not say, well, I just have to go along with it because that's how my generation is. No, don't do that. I have a study about the uh, cursed generation of the Antichrist. I'll put that link here at the end if I can remember when I get to the office. Oh, and by the way, that uh, black spot right there, that was from a fire burning some brush and a big piece of uh, like a hot coal or whatever popped out and hit me in the shirt right there. Thankfully, I wear cotton, so I didn't burst into flames with acryl acrylic fiber on. <laughs> but uh, again, you know, whole oh, living dangerously. Oh, it's so bad. These bugs that are flying around my head, they land on me and they, they go in my eye and they, they are here to drink my blood. Why would you live in such a place? Because I enjoy it. You know, all this beauty out here and everything else, I'll put up with some bugs. Kind of like YouTube. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of beautiful people on YouTube, a lot of um, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm not talking physical attraction, but what I'm saying is some uh, people that are my, uh, uh, I appreciate them very much, say it that way. And, um, but then there's the people that just fly and just, you know, you have that too. We deal with that in the comments. Thank you to everybody out there for posting stuff in the comments and uh, helping me fight these people. So just wanted to put that out there as a little challenge to you. Don't be afraid to live dangerously. Um, you know, I have no health insurance. I have no insurance on any building that I own. We live debt free. Uh, we trust God and God provides, you know, the just shall live by faith. Well, give God a chance to prove himself. A lot of people, they say that they, we live by faith, and yet they never give God the chance to do anything because they have everything covered with insurance and with this safety net and that safety net and all these other safety things. Um, no way to live. That will be it. And uh, thank you very much for watching. I have some studies that I'm working on right now. So keep an eye out for those and continue to pray for the ministry. See you in the next video.